and traditional because of this. Okay. In the old days, communication was really this platform. How did you get your message out? Well, there was a distributor for that content. So these folks. All right. Remember the old days? You had to wait and watch and wait for your information. Nobody waits for their information anymore. Okay. You've got to get your information. You've got to become a broadcaster. Okay. And what's cool about this is nobody's paying attention to this stuff anymore. So the message is no longer relevant. It's push versus pull marketing. Okay. It used to be you'd have to push your message to people. Now people have the power to really get their own information. Okay? They're curating their own information. Everybody is their own producer now. In the old days, you were the producer. They don't care anymore. They're going to find their information. My wife's a perfect example. We've got four kids. She's like, we got to do this thing. And I'm not sick, by the way. You can't be late. I just have bad allergies. Your, your baby's safe. I promise. Uh, so uh, my wife uh, it comes home. It's like, oh, we got to do this thing with the, this and the. I'm like, You've been talking to Dr. Google again, haven't you? Dr. Google. Google is a machine. You've got to feed that beast continuously. Now, I, with my background, I say video. Video is going to dominate. Why is video so important? I'm going to show some video clips to you too. Okay? Give me one second here. Let's go back to this. Okay. I want to turn the light off because showing video is better with the light on. Okay? So, I always get this. Well, I'm not very good at video. I, I just don't want to do it. I said, well, actually, you're, you're worse than that. You suck. You're horrible. Okay? You're all going to suck at it. I sucked at it. But I've been doing it three decades. So I had to go back in the archives to show you my worst one of all time. My first one, I was in college, public access television, and I was horrible. Now, if you walk away from this and get nothing, I don't care. But this will give you confidence that you can do video when you see this video. Okay? That's my whole goal is to lift up your confidence. Okay? And, and realize that you're going to suck, suck early, and suck often, and get it out of the way. Okay? Just suck and put it out there. Okay? Because then after that, you're like, it's not as bad as that first one. My fifth one's awesome. It's still pretty bad, but it's not as bad as this one. So, perfect example, we were in college, uh, drinking a few beers, of course, and my friends challenged me to be on public access television. Anybody that's old enough remembers Wayne's World. I was on before Wayne's World. Okay? I think the story was on me on Wayne's World was that bad. So it was public access, and they said, yeah, you can come on. So I was going to go sit down. All of a sudden they said, well, you're on the air in 10 seconds. So I was like, what do you mean this is live? It's live, and it's a, a call-in show. Okay? You ready? This is going to give you confidence, folks. We're on the air.
and uh, met some of the executives. I'm like, let me take you out because I want to learn the secrets. So I'm like, well, you can't give me that much information. I'm like, double, double. <laughs> and I sit out with these guys till two in the morning to try and get as much information as I could because I was a reporter, you know, you get information. So search engine is the, the key to marketing. You've got to be found. If nobody knows where you are, how's going to let them But nobody knows where you are, you don't exist. I always tell people, if you're not on Google, you do not exist in this day and age. You don't. People go to Google for everything, okay? They're the beast. I feed that beast so much stuff every day. I love Google. I pet him, I feed him, I give him stuff. You feed him because that's where you're going to be found, okay? So they told me it's a pretty simple when you think about it. Relevant content, we try and match it up for what people are searching for. Relevant content for what you're searching for. They don't care if you're Coca-Cola or Jim's Auto Part in Grand Prairie. If you are giving information, not selling, giving relevant content to people in that space looking for it, Google will continue to match you up. So think like that, okay? Think, all right, what do my customers care about? What do I sell? Think of something to create that they find value in. That's relevant content. So video is 53 times more likely to put you on the front page than text. That's why I love video. 53 times, huge. Now, I don't believe this stat, but I use the heck out of it because Forrester says it's true, so I'm going to use it. Videos worth 1.8 million words. So, okay, so I'll do six videos, six minute videos, six million words. You can't ever write that much stuff. You know? That's why I say video is crucial, and all the users online are doing video. I'm going to give one big example of one of my clients. Uh, now, I know what you're going to say, well, golly, that's Budweiser, and we're not Budweiser. Yes, that's true. We're going to get into Parks and Rec, but I'm giving this as an example because this is a great example. Okay, Budweiser came to me uh, seven, six years ago, said we want to create a campaign. Can you come up with some fun videos? And we want to put it on television. I'm like, okay, we'll do that. Okay, Budweiser TV. I said, but let's put some of this stuff on Facebook and YouTube. Okay, they got more traction, more visibility online. Budweiser, one of the biggest brands in the world, does a thing with Bud Light Band, so he's band guys. Okay. And they were not utilizing digital space. They had no impressions online, okay? <coughs> okay? Now, this is a story we did on uh, one of the artists. I'll show you the video, why I think it worked, show you the impressions, and then we'll, we'll speak uh, more specifically about you guys. And then, at the end of this deal, I'm going to give some uh, actual hands-on experience and take back as well. So, Do it as long as people come see me. As long 
as there's enough fans out there to make it work for me coming to their town to play, I'll keep it. Even in the 80s? If I'm 80, yeah. If I can still do it, I will. Why not? Okay, why for that? Yes, you're not Budweiser, I get that. But think about this for a minute. That video wasn't about a musician. That video was not about a personality. There are personalities that come to your parks. There are personalities that come and do sports at your places. There are personalities. You've got to find them. It's about telling a story. So I didn't want to focus on the music. I wanted to focus on him as a personality and who he was. But my fans did five campaigns for him, five events, 174 million credit. Now what you're saying, that's Budweiser, that's you. You can create, you're not going to get 174 million credit. But we created something that wasn't on TV, wasn't on print, wasn't on radio, all online. No one knew where to find us until we started creating the content. Okay? Now, let's get into this. Okay, so I looked at their website. Okay, anybody from Arlington here? Okay, don't take any of this personal. I'm helping you, okay? I'm here to help. I'm your friend on this, I think. Normally people pay me for this, so you get free, free stuff here. Okay, so uh, I go to their deal, the U Sports, okay? Here's a great opportunity, okay? Everyone wants to show pictures of their deal, show, explain what they're doing. You've already got sponsors, okay? Why wouldn't you create video content? Dicks, we're gonna feature a team every week. Put your logo on with video content. Dicks pays you. You make a percentage off that, you pay the video company or whatever. But it's about the teams and the customers. Focus on the teams and the customers, not what you do. Focus on player of the week, teams of the week, sponsors. Let's expand that sponsorship dollar. What, what do y'all do for them right now? What, where are they? Are they just on your website? Are they um, at the event? What sites are they paying back at okay. our facility? Traditional stuff, mm -hmm. okay? Nothing wrong with that. But let's take that sponsorship and make it more digital, especially the video. You don't think Dix would want, okay, for X amount of dollars, we'll do 10 videos this year. Get started. Now, y'all have extra content that you're not paying for. You're actually monetizing, but you're letting the sponsor pay for it. That's thinking outside the box. Let's take that traditional way and, but you could create for anything. Teams, uh, and what I love about the teams is, I'm going to go to the next thing. Oh, I jumped ahead of myself. I'm going to show you one I did for a barbecue joint in Allen, Texas, all right? You would think, okay, they're just going to talk about barbecue and all that. No, they were sponsoring the Allen, uh, Allen uh, hockey team, minor league team. Same exact thing. What are you doing? Oh, i got the banner at the stadium. I've got it in their website. Nothing else. Create a video, bug it, you get people involved. Guess the first thing they did? Everybody featured on this video started sharing it. They were found when they were talking about the hockey team. It's a sponsorship. You don't have to be Budweiser to sponsor video content and big events. You can sponsor it, but make it more digital. And here's an example. And he's done quite well with this. Uh, it wasn't about the hockey team, it was about the community. With the barbecue joint, what, 
Did you see one thing of barbecue? Absolutely nothing. But you're focusing on who's the most important, your customer, and what I like to call brand ambassadors. You get them on your side, and they're pitching you, they're selling you, they're talking about you. I would, I would be doing a kid's baseball team every week. How many on our team? 15, 16? You don't think every parent is going to share that on their Facebook page? All of a sudden, <coughs> the average Facebook fan deal is 300, 500. So let's say you get 10. Let's say 10 share. That's uh, 3,000 people you just reach like that instantly. By not you pushing it, by them pushing it. Always think about who's going to push it and why are they going to push it. You focus on them, feature them. Okay, so now let's go to this birthday party. All right, great birthday party, come to our deal. Well, we featured your team this week. You are going to be, the, the premiere of the video is airing during your birthday. You're going to be the star. Boom. So all of a sudden, they're coming because their premiere, the first time it's ever shown, is coming. That's what we do with the barbecue joint. Uh, we did another team. It was like a little league team. So he's like, we're going to feature you. We're sponsoring that. And now I'll bring everybody. We'll give you all 20% off. Plus, we showed the video on the big screen. Every kid showed up. Of course. That's all right. That's bringing them. It's good. Okay, so birthday parties, you can do all kinds of stuff as well. Gyms. Oh, this is my favorite. This is an easy one. Gyms. All right? Y'all are focusing on what here? Fitness. 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 Okay. Fair. You're showing the gym. 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 They all look the same to me. No offense, they all look the same. That's going to be anywhere. Okay? <coughs> same deal. Weights. Okay, tell them to run it. Okay, fine. All right? What do the customers want in that gym? They all want to work out. They all want to learn techniques. They all want to do stuff. Always think about the end user. What does the end user want? The end user typically likes to learn. A lot of people are scared to come to a gym because they don't know what the hell they're doing. You know? They're like, oh, gosh. Right? So why not give them tips and information? So we work with the local gold gym. All right? Once again, I'm trying to show you this is not about you. This is about what the end user cares about. Remember content, relevant content. I'm I sometimes make sense here. It ties all together. I'm just giving you all examples. So let's show this gym. We don't show the gym, really. It's not about the gym, it's about the content. I am a group fitness instructor at Gold Gym in Loveland. I was teaching all day, um, the day that I went into labor. So I taught three classes uh, that night at home, had a baby. I think the most important reason to work out when you're pregnant is, first of all, to stay healthy, to stay fit. Um, there's a lot of uh, health benefits. Of course, you have less stress, you are more comfortable because you're carrying less weight around. Um, but it's also really fun just to keep moving while you're pregnant. My uh, favorite tagline, if you will, for being pregnant is, you know, if you're going to be tired, if you're going to feel sick, you're going to feel that either way. Whether you're sitting on the couch or whether you're walking on a treadmill or going to a class. So you might as well just get up and do something. I think it's important that you teach your kids how to be healthy and a healthy lifestyle is not just um, eating healthy, but it's also moving and keeping your body active as well. Okay, so that was more profile on her and being healthy. We also do tips and information stuff, but it still showed the gym while she was given the information. So I go along here. Let's go to the next one. Golf, okay? Golf instruction, okay? You want to show your course, right? All right. How about instead of showing the course, you do a, a 30 second deal on let's show you how to get out of a stand trap. I'm on hole number nine at the whatever course. Let me show you, I'm not here to promote the course. By the way, here's the course, hole nine. Pretty cool, a sand trap. Same deal here, how to get over the water. Tips and information per hole. You show the course, but you're giving out relevant content that people care about. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Think like a reporter, okay? Okay, this is an easy one. Volunteers, okay? We want to feature you as a volunteer, same as the team. Feature of the volunteer. Give me a 30 second little blur video. You were the volunteer of the month. Y'all show pictures, want to do a quick little video. They're going to share that as well. Now I'm going to take a lot of questions in a minute. Okay, so uh, I was too generic to not have a title on this page. I said, give up the best tips. All right, number one, most important thing of video is not video, it's not, it's audio. 
If your audio is terrible, you're, you're toast. You can't do anything. It's got to have audio. So, I apologize. Once again, if you're late, it's not the blue. Okay. So, audio. Invest in a microphone. Do whatever you can. I'm going to show you examples how you can even do something on your iPhone. I know what you're saying. You've been to TV for this. You've won Emmys. You've done this. I'm going to show you that the, uh, you can do something on your iPhone. You can do something without equipment. Without equipment. All right, we'll get to that. But audio, I don't care if it's, no, you just focus on audio, okay? Number two is lighting. If you have bad lighting and bad audio, you might as well not do it. This you don't do it. You don't have to buy professional lighting, okay? I'll give you an example. I can't give away secrets because I'm going to use one of you as guinea pigs in a minute. And I'll explain all these and what the hell I did wrong because y'all are going to mess up. You're going to be worse than that first video. So everyone's all I can tell that last person about to get out the door. I'm going to pick you in the back. These, these people are afraid up here. Audio, lighting. Okay? Uh, short, you are not a Hollywood producer. Don't do a five minute piece, ten minutes. You're not Spielberg. Your stuff sucks. Especially early on. keep it short. 15 to 90 seconds. Are there exceptions to the rule? Sure. You can do longer stuff and all that. But technically, I would stick in that and be tight. Some people say, but I got all this stuff to talk about. Great. That means you have five different videos. One topic per video. Remember that. Very important. Because if not, you're all over the place. Focus. Gym. Focus on the gym. Okay, what kind of gym? What type of thing? How about barbells? Okay? Don't tell me about this and how to work out on barbells. Boom. Tell me barbells. Golf. Don't tell me about golf and your courses. Sand track. <coughs> One topic. Keep it short. Okay? Remember that. One topic. Keep it short. By the way, at 90 seconds, uh, actually at, at 60 seconds, 52% of the audience has already gone on average. At five minutes, 90% is gone. Why are you putting all that effort in when no one's going to watch? I'll tell you this, and I've said it before. And I love the Lord. I'm Christian, by the way. For, and this is a Texas group. If Jesus was coming down and someone shot that on YouTube, and it said five minutes. I'm like, yeah, it's too long. <laughs> the Lord, and I love the Lord. I probably watched the first 30 seconds. Like, wow, that's pretty cool. I probably wouldn't even click it because it says five minutes. But if it said 30, I think the Lord made it 60. I'll get the idea of it. Keep it short, okay? Because most people, when they see that time, they will not click it. I don't care what is on the content. The first thing they look at is the time. And you have more than two minutes. People don't have that much time anymore, do they? They pretend they don't. Study and sequence, don't be, don't act like you're in a hurricane. Now, if you're in a hurricane, okay, I'll accept that. But try and be steady. I'll show you how to do that. Natural sound. This is kind of important. A lot of the stories I was showing, again, interview, and it wasn't just an interview all the way through. Showed some music, showed the kids getting the deal, showed them that sound. And you're like, well, I'm not that good at that. Okay? Give me an easy example. You could do it without editing. Perfect. Do a, a, a one sequence shot. Uh, let's go to the golf because that's an easy one. Hey, we're on hole number nine here in Arlington. Uh, we're going to show you how to hit down the fairway. Really key here. Pause. Don't say anything. That's called that sound. All right, folks, that's how you do it. Break it up. It makes the world a difference. It's called natural sound. Sometimes you don't have to interview somebody. Maybe you just want to do a short little video clip of a kids playing. I almost get the permission. Uh, kids, kids playing uh, baseball. Just show the action. No interviews. There was 15 seconds. Boom, you're done. And there's tools for that. Uh, write down the vidy, v i d d y, tout, t o u t. Those are good websites, uh, apps where you do not have to uh, edit. You only get 15 seconds. That'll force you. You film. And it counts you down. Once it's at zero, the video stops. What it does is, what's really cool about this app is, and that was tout.com, vidy, V-I-D-D-Y. And what's cool about those is, uh, if we do a video, we'd have to take it, put it in, download it, send it to YouTube. It's time consuming. And that can get old after a while. And if you're at an event, you're like, I want to get this out immediately. The old days, you couldn't do that. With these two apps, you do it, once the thing goes down, you can say, where do you want to share it with? YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Instant, instant. That's pretty cool. Get close to the action. I don't, I don't want you filming all the way out here and they're way back there. Get as close as you can. 
okay? Get really tight shots. That's where the emotion is with video. Tight shots. Uh, and if you're going to interview someone, don't show their whole body. You right here, frame it up. Right there. God, give it to away. We're about to give somebody an example. Okay. Characters. There's always characters that come around your place, I promise. Find them. Focus on them. They're loud. They're boisterous. They're interesting. And they like the spotlight. Me, me, me. Get those people on camera. Because they will be promoting your stuff. Especially if they're uh, characters. <coughs> I was explaining all this stuff, y'all are saying, well, that's great video, high definition, all that. Fair enough. How about the next thing? This is all from my iPhone, all by myself. I was asked by American Red Cross to help out during Lancaster. I was driving back to town. I said, I'll pop in for a little bit. I had my iPhone, and I was like, all right, I'll do some few things. <coughs> you can do stuff from mobile nowadays. So this is a little video we did for them. Or I did.
and then we can start taking questions while it's downloaded. So fire away, raise your hand, whatever, if you've got a question, and uh, I'll answer whatever. And I hope I gave you all some examples of what to do. Uh, but now the specific questions I like better, because then we can really dig into this. Is that my iPad as well? I would think so. Let's try it. Uh, what were you going to tell us about pushing the red button? Oh, gosh. Okay. This is a great story. So, so a buddy of mine, uh, when I uh, covered the Dallas Cowboys, I was in the horrible market of Laredo, Texas. Market 198. There's only 202 markets, so we were barely on TV. Uh, and they were so cheap. They would they would pay for a camera guy. So, like, crap, I'll just get one of my buddies to do it. Horrible mistake. So uh, we're there, uh, Calvary Training Camp, Jimmy Johnson, uh, Big Time, this is huge, okay? So we're, we're getting Jimmy, and there's like 500 reporters, all that. So I'm like, let's try and get him on the side and try and do a cool interview with him, okay? Which, you know, he doesn't normally do. I don't know, I that. I apologize about the allergies. All right, so let me make sure I'm downloading this first. I'll download those two videos and we can kind of look at it real quick on, on the screen. So, Jimmy, Jimmy's going to the golf cart and like, hey, do you mind just saying something about this Laredo? We're out of Laredo, man. We had, you know, might as well. He's like, all right. Jimmy, hey, you're the best man in Laredo, Texas. Chris, hey, it's you rock, man. Cowboys, how about them Cowboys? We're like, oh, my, this is awesome. So I go back to the station. I'm like, you're not going to believe it. I get everybody in the room, and this is the video we had. You see our feet. Hey, let's get Jimmy. We, we make it. We make it. Oh my God. Oh my God. Unbelievable. Incredible. I can't believe we got him. He got the freaking record button backwards. So we got him walking up. He hit the record button again. Are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. Boom. Hit it. Turned off. Hit it again. And you just see our feet jump. I can't believe that. That guy was my friend for a long time. He hated it. It was pretty bad. So record, record buttons are kind of important. Really important. Okay, let's import these two. So basically, all I did was we interviewed it, putting it in here. Now we're going to import it. I should show you uh, the video too. All right, questions. Come on. There you go. Uh, what did you say the video thing is called? Which one? The owl. Oh, the owl. I mean, you don't have to have it, but it is. It does help with uh, how how sturdy the. the the deal is it really just stabilizes your video so it's not as shaky. And you can Google it, you'll buy it online. Uh, o W L E, I believe. Because that's a weird way they did it. Al Lee. Chris. Yes. Um about filming kids and in public events, can you said always get permission. Is that a release form? Is that mom and dad going, Oh yeah, you can because the last thing you want is mom and dad being like, I didn't want to go on the web. Yeah. What I would do is I would have uh, however many kids are there. 20, I would print out 25 sheets of whatever. Hey, this will be used on our site, online, on social. Do you have a problem or whatever? You know, you could probably Google once again video release forms, the standard one. And I would make every parent sign. <coughs> one parent doesn't sign, you find out what kid that is, and you make sure he does not get in. Which is pretty easy to do. Yeah. You just make sure you get certain shots. We already have but like normally, a <laughs> normally, I mean, 90% of kids, I think, uh, uh, five years uh, and older, or three years and older, are already online. Yeah. I mean, no one's that paranoid anymore. Yeah. That's money. So if you were creating a YouTube channel, for example, and wanting to get users to submit content, what are some suggestions to facilitate that process? That's a tough one. Um, I would, and that's a tough one. Um, I don't experience too much with that. I would have them send it to you rather than just posting it on YouTube. The cool thing is, she asked it, how to get users to send in video. I would have them create their own YouTube account, send you the link, have you look at it, say, hey, we want this one. We want to post it on our channel. And also, uh, does everybody know what a branded YouTube channel is? All you do is sign up to YouTube, create a branded YouTube channel with your logo and all that stuff. Why I like that is, your videos just aren't all over this, all over the place, which is great too. You want that, but you have a central location where all your videos are. Okay? Uh, does everybody know what that is? You want me to show you an example of that? Here. Here. 
through all just all my videos. So that's why it's important. All right, more questions. Come on. I, I know I gotta fill up the time slot or else Gary's gonna be mad. What is my time slot? 10 15 to what? To what? Yes. Yeah. And my favorite course is Final Cut Pro, uh, but it's it's expensive. But now uh, Apple just came out with a new one. So go. You are, the problem is a lot. I only know Apple products. I've never used PC. Sorry. Uh, so, but I know that uh, Windows has one. Um, there's iMovie. I don't know about iMovie. Uh, but I would do Final Cut Pro, and they've got an easier version. It just came out. If you just go to the Apple Store or Google it, it would be. Uh, let me see here. They've got a brand new one. Oh, this is on YouTube. So that's funny. That's but Final Cut Pro would be the top one, and now they've got an easier one that you could buy and download it for like a couple hundred bucks. For the Final Cut Pro, the old days like two grand. So you get it for like an editing software that's really good for two hundred dollars maybe. Let's see. You can also get the Creative Cloud Suite. They're doing monthly subscriptions. Okay. So it's thirty bucks right now. <coughs> yeah. There's all kinds of stuff. I mean, but Final Cut would be my favorite. Another question while I'm looking this one up? Yeah, here it is right here. That's pretty cool. I love that play All right, next question. What's your opinion on putting a video on Facebook and or both should you use both videos? I know Facebook allows you to put and the comments. Okay. I would put my videos everywhere. I put them on my grandmother's church website if she wanted to. I don't care about the technology. Final Cut Pro 10 reimagines movie making and post production. It streamlines every step of the process with a breakthrough. Oh, wow. that was loud. Um, but I put my videos everywhere. What I think your question is you put it on YouTube and post it on Facebook or download it straight to Facebook. A little bit of both. Doesn't matter. Uh, I know some people are more technical on that. Uh, once again, I focus more on the content and I don't care about the technology. Technology will continue to change. Don't ever. Put everything in one and put all your eggs in one basket. I don't mind it on Vimeo. Vimeo is another good website. Uh, uh, I use, but I use I I don't put my videos just on my website because if you put them on YouTube, you get the SEO, you get the search, you get all that. But now you can embed on your website, and the key to that is you don't have to pay for storage. Let YouTube pay the storage. You embed it, and it plays on your website. But YouTube is storage. <coughs> So you do have the bug on there, but I'm okay with that. I don't that bother me at all, and everybody's already used to it already, so. More specific on content or anything? When you're battling uh, outdoor uh, video stuff, what do you use? I'm battling outdoor allergies. Yeah. Well, we've had uh, wind. That's hard, yeah. Especially from the cell phone. Right? So we've been trying to record it. You know, we had some that had a bit of black on the thing on that. It's like a little bit. You know, yep. Some, yeah, like wind, is, wind, wind is a beast, man. Like Where are you out of? Where is the wind? Man, I would try and get around a building. I would try and get them indoors. Although, if the story is about something outdoors, it doesn't really work. Right. Yeah. yeah. What, what, what kind of stuff are you filming? I mean, well, there's a couple things. Um, the one thing I was working on was do a week long uh, camping field trip. Uh, but a couple of days we're outside just doing. I would probably just do the net sound stuff, showing the canoe, showing the kids, focus on the images, and then afterwards you really need audio. Oh, I've done it. You have to put your own voice, your own voice later. Hey, this is what we're working on here, and have your own voice underneath. The key is this: people get it backwards. They do the video and then they try and voice it while they're watching it. Mistake. Don't do 
to worry about the video first, lay down your audio first. Your audio is your foundation. Always lay down the audio first, and then you put the video over to match it up. So the reason I do that is it is almost near impossible, and I even mess up doing this, to look at a video and explain it and you're gonna mess up something. It's like here we're okay, and then we're going to the and then it, and then it, your audio's already too late, the boat's already in, uh, this level, and then you, you can't time it out. So what I do is have a script or whatever. Hey, what you do uh, every morning, 7 a.m. You're not even looking at video. All you're doing is laying your audio down. Okay? Can do every morning, 7 a.m. Uh, some of the tips that we provide are what? What would it be? I don't know. Yeah, don't tip over. Uh, kids have a lot of fun. This is a group from uh, wherever. Ew. Lay it down, then go get the pictures and put the pictures over because then you can time it from what you're saying to go right above that video and it makes more sense. So always lay the audio down first. Yes? How effective are videos with um, just music and then words, you know, instead of uh, actual words? I, if, if I was going to do that, I would prefer at least pictures. I would do pictures with music. And words are okay, but... I mean, I, instead of having someone talk, they you have the subtext at the bottom. I think that's fine, too. I think that... I, you saw the... Uh, the uh, Red Cross video I did, a lot of it didn't have much interview, which is music and pictures. Pictures and music together are pretty powerful. Remember type, emotion, uh, you know, especially with kids and stuff, people would try to get the wide shot of all the kids, focus on one or two. People remember the, the images and the facial expressions and kids smiling. On that, you've got to be really tight. You've got to get the emotion. <coughs> the tighter you are, the better the emotion comes across. Anybody else? Yes. Do you have like a set ratio as far as the person that you're interviewing, um, whenever you inter kind of introduce them in the video and then cut the B-roll or some other action, do you have like a certain... Time, like a time length? Like how much do you want their face in it? And Great question. That's a good question. That's a real specific. Uh, I normally like, uh, you got to have a minimum of four seconds on the person because you can sue firm and all that. Anywhere from four to six seconds, but I don't like to talk in the head that much longer than that. Um, I like to get right to the images. And then you let their audio go, once again, lay down the interview, then cover it up with the video afterwards. Once again, the audio is a foundation, the images go on top, because why that matters, all right? Is when they say something specific, like, uh, uh, you know, that was great, uh, the home run that won it at the end of the game for the kids or whatever. You lay down that audio, now you go find that video, you put it right when they say that. Okay? It matches it up, it's so much better, rather than just laying down the video and having something talk, nothing really matching up. That's why the audio laid down with the video, but I think four, four to six seconds is plenty. I don't think you need to go much longer than that. You know, and if, and if you cannot get a talking head, okay, let's just say, hey, I don't know how to edit. <coughs> Fair enough. You give the microphone to somebody, have them on camera, the action's going on right here, right? You start talking, you just keep talking, and they keep talking, you just pay them the action, have them keep talking. So now, you know, boom, it's over. And they've got it, and there it is. I'll give you a good example. Let's, let me go to that video site. I get it on here. I usually do it from my phone. So, because it's a mobile, it's really a mobile app. And I'll give you an example of that exactly what I was talking about. Uh, I did it with my kids. I, my kids are on all the time, so anybody can throw my kids out there. So here's one where I get to these, these are, none of these are edited, okay? So I'm gonna this one. Galleria. 
You say, what if I can't get any interviews? Okay, just do it now. <laughs> Share on Facebook, Twitter, email. I think they have YouTube as well. Have you ever used the app? Uh, my kids use them a lot. It's called Keep or Clip. No. I want to, what is that? A good one? Yeah. I mean, kids make, know more about the stuff than yeah, I do. Yeah, they make little videos. The Keep one is is limited. It only you can only make like a thirty second video or whatever. Right. So short, and then it just cuts Same off. Same kind of thing there. Um, and then the other <coughs> one is called Clip. K L I P. Okay. Uh, but they use them to make little videos and then they post them and their friends are following them, you know, like on Instagram or something. Yeah. They can see all their videos. So that's, that's where it's going. <laughs> it's all about video. Yeah. Keep it, but what, even the apps and the people, they understand 15 to 30 seconds. That's all people want to watch. Right. So don't get too creative. Don't, once again, that was what I said at the beginning. Keep it short and tight. Do you get the licenses to music you use? Great question. There's royalty for free music, or you can buy some. Yeah, I definitely would not take a famous song and put it on there. They'll, they'll take you down. That's what makes it good. Yeah. <laughs> there, is, there is a website, okay? And I think it's called Go. Oh, man. Someone told me about it a couple of years ago. Karaoke, karaoke music or something. So, what this guy does is he, he sings these famous songs to karaoke and you can utilize it. And it sounds pretty close. And so, you can use famous music. But some of karaoke, again. so it's not technically the song. It's this guy's music, so he allows you to use his music, which is him singing the song, so you can get away with it. Where do you find most of the royalty-free music? Is there a website or? Yeah, uh, that's once again, that's uh, my editors will know that stuff. You give them good content. Yeah, iTunes does. Okay, I mean, they're everywhere. 